All right, and welcome to animation of one of my characters. So I'm gonna be using Adobe Illustrator 6 or whatever fucking thing it's at. This is the trial version, so I plan on getting the regular version soon, but this will have to do. I am gonna be doing a character I call Trinity. So let me import her really quick. This process can get very, very long, so what I'm going to do is create three layers. Name one her name. Name one guides. Name one image. Whatever. Okay, and then we're going to lock the image so that we can't modify it at all. Then we're going to lock the Trinity one. We're going to go to guides. Now we're going to go in the thing here and see what pieces might need to be synced together. As you can tell, this is all going to be one straight line, but we have intersects here. We don't want to have this line be crooked compared to these ones. So what we're going to do is go to here, hold shift, go over. Once that's there, I'm going to click V to get my pointer, right click, make guide. Now that will show up whenever I want to uh, find that line so if I make this click here if I go click here click here click here go back click click I go to here all this hairline will look straight no matter what instead of eyeballing it you got the for sure thing now <laughs> Alright, I stopped the video because I realized I made a big mistake before I started doing my well I started doing my drawing. I forgot to change my layers. So this could be a problem now. I only just started so I can easily fix it. All I gotta do is click my actual paths, drag them onto <laughs> Oh, because one of them is selected. Okay, let's grab that layer. What the heck is going on here? Why can't I do this? Hmm. Okay, troubleshoot. What's going on here? Why can't I change anything? It's not locked, I know that. Maybe it's because the image is locked? No, oh, it is on that dragging it all the way. Okay, that's done. So now that our guides are there, I switch to the right layer. And I also made another mistake here, what you're going to want to do is always make a uh, guide for the face. And all you got to do is kind of guesstimate where you're going to put your line. There. That solved my one problem I had. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is make all this into guides, or into, not into a group. So you're going to shift click all of them. Every single piece has been selected. And you're going to go, for Mac, it's Command G, or you could go to Object Group. But now all of my hair is one group. Alright, so I just got done doing the eyes, and now I'm going to actually start uh, doing the coloring on them. So I switched back to you guys how to color in the layers without it looking weird or anything. So first of all, I'm going to reopen. I'm going to go to my, I have swatches over here, and I have swatches over here. Swatches are what they call colors, and these are uh, patent tone, solid coated. If you want to get to your different swatches, you click the this is right around here there'll be two boxes this is your stroke this is your fill you're gonna want to right click you're gonna want to click on that arrow and go down to swatch library menus you'll get a whole bunch of stuff like metal and all that stuff but you're gonna want to go to color books and then you'll see these patent tone colors patent tone is what the 12 drummer characters are made with it's a universal it's the it, it, 
they're basically code for different colors, there's different variations of them. So you can make your characters look a lot different. I use solid coded, they're solid uncoded, I'm not sure what the difference is. I'm pretty sure there's no difference. Alright, I might be wrong, I, I don't know anything about colors. But I use the solid patent tone, if you want to have them bigger, you go into your menu option up here and go large. But just for this tutorial, I'm going to go back to medium. No, I'm going to go back to large. I hate having so many colors presented to me at once. Okay, so we're going to use our swatch here. So first of all, we're going to color in her, her pupils. Voila. Her eyes look somewhat normal. Now we just put the way back in. There. Eyes. <sighs> There, that's the tutorial piece on the eyes. Alright, so I'm going to show you how to do the nose now. The nose can be a little tricky. I had to get my teacher at school to teach me how to do this, but you're going to want to do is click here, click at the tip, click at each tip. There, we have a perfect nose. So we're going to just click V to end the vector. We're going to go to Object. We're going to go down to Path. And you should go over and see outline stroke. This will turn the stroke of the vector line into the an actual vector. So it's turned the stroke into a vector, so we actually have points everywhere. There, and that's how easy the nose was. I just thought I'd point that out because it was a little bit hard to catch the first time. So now that we've actually got a face, we can actually start deciding um, skin color. Now, skin color is a little tricky, but if you, I usually, and I used to use Crawl Draw and I can actually use my own color, but if you want, there's actually a skin tones swatch in here. That can be somewhat helpful. I don't find it that helpful at all, but I'm pretty sure if you're a little bit lazy, you can figure it out. See, there's not really that much you can work with here. You can edit from it. Like, if I want to, I can grab this swatch, drag it over here, and then go to uh, swatch options. And, you know, I can play around with it. Say, I want the skin to be darker. Well, I want it to go to 50. Let's uh, go to 50 preview. Oh, we're going to want to be clicked on something that actually has the swatch color in it. So, let's, we're going to click on the face. Just watch, watch options. Preview. Let's tone it down to 50. Okay, didn't get anything better there. Let's go to 35. Got a little bit more better, I guess. Okay, we want brighter skin. We don't want her to look pale and disgusting. And wait, now we're going a little bit too pink. yellowish okay I'm just gonna sit at that for a while I guess uh, it looks okay from a distance I guess uh, we should be all fine with that okay and the reason why I picked solid coated is because of hair this is girl is gonna be a brunette so let's pick a some brown swatches so there's some brown swatches here but if you scroll down you should see different ones well, let's go with these ones okay there's our one problem so one thing we have going on here is these are all grouped together. So if you double click, you should go into, uh, what the hell's it called? It's a mode where it lets you select stuff in a group. So you can actually go in a group and select certain things. Just double click on the group and select and you should be fine. So let's make, let's grab certain hairs and make them, you know, actual hair color. Okay, now that we got that, let's gonna pick a color similar. Look at lightish brown. There we go, lightish brown. Light. Okay, I was checking to make sure I was recording. I wasn't sure if I turned it back on yet. There, and if you click over here, you can get out of that. Click out of it again. There. Now, what you're going to notice is that my eyes look a little kind of goofy because I haven't finished them yet. 
what we're going to do is we're going to go I drop tool, V, I, get the skin color in there. And then what we're going to do is go to this uh, tool here. We're going to go uh, new swatch. And we're going to adjust it. Make sure you have your skin color swatch selected. And you're going to click new swatch. And you're going to adjust it from that one. What you're going to want to do is darken it. So I want to darken it a little bit. I should be easier. It's easier to see why I'm gay. Gives me more options. Okay. We've made a new swatch. So that's our new swatch we have. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to complete the eyes. So what we're going to do is we're going to click group it together. Click on the group, shift click onto the background group, then we're gonna go into our layers menu and we're gonna click that, make it black. Hopefully that was behind everything. Okay, I'm not saying it's a little bit dark, so I'm probably gonna have to edit it a little bit better. But we are zoomed in, so let's see what it looks like from the far back. And we're still a little hot. Let's uh put it down to zero. Lower every single line down to zero. Because the total drama characters, their eyes don't have, you know, black circles around their irises. So let's just take that into account and change everything. I'm going to go into my A option menu. I just got to change this uh, curve here a little bit. There. Now I do notice that, I do recognize that's a little bit too bright still. So let's uh, go back into CYMK mode, make it darker. So, got kind of what we want going on here. I'm going to click make this black. There, somewhat of a head. Let me just get rid of the guide so you can see what we've got so far. Yeah, and that's what we've got so far. I'm going to skip ahead almost to the very end unless I pick up something along the way. was the first how to do total drama characters in Adobe Illustrator. I'll probably be doing another one, but right now I'm going to go edit this together and get it up on the, the, the internets. So I'll see you guys next time on how to make total drama characters using Adobe Illustrator. See ya.